Hello and welcome back to my Factorio Fundamentals tutorial series. I am Exterminator and thank you for joining me again today. And in this episode, we are going to be covering the main bus. Now there's going to be uh, about four different topics under that broad topic that we're going to be covering uh, more specifically and in detail. There were a lot of suggestions and a lot of great feedback in my very first video about working backwards and, uh, you know, planning your, planning your route and stuff uh, in regards to the main bus. I had several people say, you know, ask why I didn't go over a main bus in that video, and that's because I wanted to make a video specifically for the main bus. And someone else just gave a suggestion to cover, uh, you know, the concept of the main bus, and they said, you know, they struggle with giving themselves enough room and expansion slots in their main bus, if you will, and uh, asked me to cover that topic, and that's what we're going to do today. So the four main things, and each of these has little subcategories kind of within them as well, the main four topics we're going to be covering today is the main bus concept, main bus spacing, how many lanes you should have, uh, expansion plans, and what to put on the bus. That's kind of all one topic. And lastly, um, having your highest use resources closest to their consumers. So we're going to cover each of these in depth. And let's just hop right into it and start with the main bus concept. So you may see the word, the term main bus thrown around a lot in the Factorio community. A lot of people do it. Uh, I do want to preface this with saying you do not have to do it. This is by no means a requirement. In fact, nothing in this video, uh, I do not want to tell you how to play. I'm just giving you my personal experience and suggestions based on the vast amount of time I have playing the game and what I've observed from other people as well. Uh, these are just clearly uh, just plainly suggestions and I'm not trying to tell you exactly how you should play the game because you should play the game however you want and whatever you find fun. Uh, but the term main bus is thrown around a lot uh, and this is basically just a very nice way to organize your factory, make it efficient and expedite the uh, you know transportation of resources throughout your base. And I like to compare main bus if you think about it to a highway uh, or a, you know interstate, whatever name you, you may call it, in a city, or, or even if not that, just a main road in your city. You know, you have these, these big, these, you know, six, eight, ten lane roads or highways in most large cities. Uh, and then off those, you have your off ramps that take you onto typically smaller uh, roads and farther, you know, then into the city, uh, and then from those into neighborhoods, etc., etc. So the actual main lanes of your main bus is what I would consider the highway, and that would be. This is just a very basic, just general thrown together layout of of a main bus. Uh, so you can imagine this as your highway, and then it splits off uh, off ramps, if you will, and they then go on to roads, which would be like these uh, lanes here, and then kind of back into little neighborhoods, which would be your production areas. So this is a very uh, much more efficient and just quicker way to transport materials throughout your factory and then having split offs throughout to go into your production areas. Of course, the other option is what a lot of people refer to as spaghetti, where you just have you know a smelter like this, for example, and you just have this one lane of iron weaving in and out throughout your factory. Uh, really no rhyme or reason to it, just kind of weaving in and out, some production facilities along the way, etc. cetera. And uh, this works. And if you like building this way, then you are more than welcome to. And it's a lot of fun to build this way. It's a very, uh, it, it can kind of spark your creativity and problem solving because you have to do a lot of routing and underground belts, uh, and it, it usually presents in very, very cool looking bases uh, in, in their own right. So uh, you can kind of uh, compare this to just having, if you imagined in real life, having like a two lane road or maybe at most a four lane road, two lanes each, each direction uh, for all of your traffic going through your entire city that just weaves through the neighborhoods. Uh, and that's not really that efficient. That's why, you know, we don't have that for a reason. Uh, but that doesn't mean that in Factorio it's bad, it's just less efficient. So a main bus, that is a general concept. I hope that kind of gives you an idea of uh, the idea behind a main bus and why it is fairly popular, especially uh, for people who like to play more efficiently. Uh, now let's move on over to a better setup example for spacing 
and uh, some possibilities for other things you can do with that spacing. So we have a uh, kind of a mock set up here of a main bus. And you'll notice between each set of lanes, there are two spaces. And for the most part, you'll notice I have groupings of four lanes. Uh, now this, I could have actually put these two together and I didn't really consider it at the time. Uh, there was, there's really no good reason I can't put these together. I guess in my mind, I just like having them separate. Uh, it is of course more space efficient to put them together. Uh, so you can do that if you want. But we do four lanes and then we do a spacing of two. And this is very important and I think this uh, ties in well to the question I had on my last video uh, about someone saying, you know, I don't really, ha I have a problem with leaving space and I have a problem routing things, you know, off from my bus and to other sides and stuff and it becomes really complicated. And this helps a lot with this. So the reason we do four lanes uh, instead of five, six, however many in a row, and the reason we leave two spaces in between is because it makes for very, very easy and clean routing from side to side, underneath, back and forth. So for example, if we want to take some copper, let's just take one of these lanes. Uh, for one, we use one of these spaces just for the splitter. If all of these lanes were right next to each other, if iron started here and went to here, uh, you know, this would of course be in the iron line and then we have to underground the iron line. It creates kind of a big mess. Uh, but here we have this open space already and then we can do this and a yellow uh, underground normal transport belt underground is a length of four reach you can see it doesn't go to five its max is four so we, we reach exactly the distance to go underneath this and continue on uh, now let's say we had even more lanes over here uh, this also as you can probably start seeing already makes it easy to continually route undergrounds because this leaves you one additional space right here to then set your next underground to continue the process through. And as you can see, this could just go under the entire thing very easily without messing with any of your main or highway lanes here. And I think this is very important. Now, of course, the red belts, the fast transport belts, the underground version of those do have a slightly longer reach. Uh, so if you wanted to just maybe plan for that, you could do more than four lanes, but I would not recommend it in a row because obviously you're not starting with the red belt. So until you get to that point, you're going to have a very difficult and uh, time, you know, trying to route things through as I just explained. Okay, so we have that. That, ex you know, that that's, that's a good reasoning for having four lanes and a maximum together and then a spacing of two between every set. Even if you don't have four lanes, you want a spacing of two. You'll notice I only have two lanes here and two lanes here, but I still leave a spacing of two in between them for exactly this reason. Okay, now one other thing I do want to mention in terms of spacing, I do not personally do this, um, but I do think it can be pretty popular and uh, pretty cool if you do want to do this yourself, is somewhere in the middle of your bus here, uh, you could leave four spaces so let's say for example we had these copper lines uh, and then let's say I wanted to uh, let's just say we started the circuits right here and the gears connected with them here we now have a spacing of four in between here if you want you could leave this and have robo ports running down the entire middle section of your main bus and this can be really handy if you're doing a mixture of uh, belts and robots. Usually I don't do that much of a mixture of them uh, or I only have little sections so there's not much use in me having it run down the entire bus but that is just my personal play style uh, which certainly is not necessarily the best play style. Um, so this is an option if you want to do that. In addition to leaving two spaces here one last thing I want to cover is it does make a very nice way to have power poles running down the middle of your bus to run power throughout your base. Now, of course, it's possible you may come into an instance where you do need to split off where one of these power poles is, uh, but it's usually as simple as just moving them, you know, for your split off and undergrounds and then continuing on. Uh, whereas if you have all your lanes together, you know, you then have to run these along the outside and cross over back and forth and it can be uh, a bit of a pain. Okay, so there's your spacing possibility for leaving room for robo ports if you want. And there we go. So general space. Now, in terms of how many lanes of each ingredient you want, 
expansion plans and what to put on the bus, which I guess kind of ties into how many lanes of each ingredient. I suppose it would be logical to start off just in general with what you may want on your bus. Now this is very loose except for probably the first three things I'm going to mention. Okay, the first three things, uh, and of course this all applies to vanilla, uh, no mods. Speaking of mods, I do want to mention really quickly, these purple entities, I think I mentioned it last episode, but these purple entities are from a cheat mode mod I'm using to simply make it easier for me to set up and demonstrate things. These are not in the normal game. Uh, they are simply here for it to make it easier for me to demonstrate because they just generate infinite materials. They have a massive power reach, etc., etc. rather than me having to set up steam power and all that just to show off uh, concepts that have nothing to do with that. Okay, so I did want to just touch on that so it's not confusing. Uh, in a normal game, you would not have these purple entities. You would, of course, have smelting, as I have set up here as an example. Okay, now, what to put on the bus? Iron, obviously, I would say is an absolute must. If you are going a main bus route, you need iron. You also need copper. And I would say almost non-negotiable is green circuits slash electronic circuits, whatever name you want to call them. Those three things, okay, I would say those are pretty much uh, non-negotiable completely. Uh, now, I would throw gears almost in there. Uh, not everyone makes gears. Sometimes I put gears on the bus, sometimes I don't. I would say those are pretty up there in terms of importance. So I would, you know, I would say that's super, super important. And even with that, I would say steel. Uh, steel, I would say, is almost a requirement along with iron and copper. Uh, you could do it kind of within your other production areas for the specific things that need it, but that gets kind of uh, tricky. I would throw steel over uh, in regards to the must-have. So iron, copper, green circuits, steel. I would recommend gears, but I, I don't think it's an absolute must, whereas the other four are. Okay. Now, from that point... It gets pretty much, it comes down to personal preference and uh, what the specifics of your factory and the needs of your factory and what you plan to do. Uh, personally, I like to also put red circuits, uh, advanced circuits is what they're actually called, uh, the processing units or blue circuits, uh, plastic, and sulfur. Now, I never used to put sulfur or really even plastic on my bus a very long time ago, but uh, now in the current state of the game, uh, we put these on here, or I do, because some of the main things you need, like science, actually requires uh, plastic or things that need plastic to go into this science. And uh, that's why I am putting these typically on the bus now. Uh, I don't know if there's really ever a time that I do not put red or blue circuits, uh, or plastic. There are some times where I will not put sulfur, uh, but I am kind of starting to more and more now. This was a fairly recent addition to a science pack recipe, uh, so I'm still kind of messing around with it. Uh, but this is typically what my main bus would look like. Now, of course, you can throw more stuff on here. Maybe you want to throw stone on here, or stone bricks, or coal, and this is where it just becomes very flexible, and I cannot personally tell you uh, you know what even what I would suggest doing because it, it it really comes down to your personal preference and factory in needs uh, aside from these first ones the iron copper green circuits steel and probably gears are the only ones I would say you just need to have okay the rest you can just you can add what you want take away what you want maybe you don't really want to put circuits on there and just want to make them only where they're needed or you want to put almost everything on there and, that, and that's totally fine Okay, now how many lanes of each of these should you have? You can reasonably launch a rocket, which is technically the goal of beating the game. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't have to do that by any means. There's lots of people who haven't. Uh, but that is, I think, a good use of a, of a measurement for the amount of materials you may need. It's just hypothetically, if you do want to get to that point of beating the game, launching a rocket, you can reasonably do it with two lanes of iron, two lanes of copper, one lane of circuits, one lane of gears, and obviously one lane of steel. Uh, and, and then, I mean, you wouldn't even have to put these on the bus. I would still put them on the bus, uh, but you can they're one lane anyway. You can't really get less than one lane in terms of actual amount of belts. You know, these lanes may not be full, uh, but having at least a belt for it. 
Uh, you can reasonably do that. I've done it. It takes a long time. You do run into material shortages along the way uh, and then kind of have to just wait it out because you just don't have the ability to expand farther. So I did want to throw that out there that is possible. It is certainly doable. I've done it multiple times. However, my recommendation would be what I have set up here. Four lanes of iron, four lanes of copper, two lanes of circuits, two lanes of gears, a lane of steel, and I will, I want to touch on here in a second why we only have one lane of steel. Uh, and then, you know, again, for me personally, I would do a lane of each circuit, plastic and sulfur. Again, that's kind of a variable you can factor in yourself or not. Uh, but this would be my recommendation up to the steel at the very minimum is this amount of stuff. Uh, at least planning for it, okay? Again, back to the question and problem someone presented in my last episode in the comment section. Uh, you know, they said, I, I'm, you know, something to the effect of I'm having, you know, trouble. Uh, yeah, I didn't leave room to expand my bus. I'm having resource shortages, uh, etc. And I would say this is why it's so important to lay out and plan for uh, this amount or more. Because let's say you lay out four lanes for iron, you know, obviously you're not feeding them right away, but if you just lay them out uh, and copper, four lanes of that, two lanes, etc., etc., um, if you don't use them all, the worst that happens is you just use a little extra space and some extra belt, you know, no big deal. Uh, but it does allow you to very easily expand up to that point if you want it. However, if you only do like two lanes of each of these and then one and one, uh, and even with leaving this two spacing, uh, you, you still kind of trapped yourself in, right? You, you don't leave yourself room to expand without like completely tearing the whole thing down or doing some really crazy uh, routing or, or, or bringing them in from the entire other side of your production or something. It gets to be a big mess. Uh, so I would say just always plan for this because the worst that happens is you just use a little extra space. Space is technically infinite in the game. Uh, and also... Uh, well, not technically infinite, there is a limit, but it's, you're never going to hit it. Um, and then, uh, also, you maybe just use a little extra belt, which, in the grand scheme of a factory that may want to try to launch a rocket, using up a few hundred, few thousand extra belt is, you know, a drop in the bucket. It's, it's basically nothing. And then you just easily have that ability to connect in the extra lanes you want, and, uh, and continue from there without any hassle, any extra trouble. It's there, ready to be supplied and good to go. Okay, now some people, uh, you know, some more experienced people who just always like to build large will do something like six lanes or eight lanes of iron and copper and maybe four lanes of circuits and four lanes of gears. And if you want to just go big and do that, go for it. Again, if you don't use it all, you just waste a little space and some belts. No big deal in my eyes. Uh, so I, I would think about when you start playing, you know, again, this tutorial is meant for newer players, but maybe, uh, intermediate or more experienced players will learn something from it, hopefully. Um, but when you go start into your factory, obviously you may not have an entire plan of what you do want to do, especially if you are a newer player, because you may not even know what, what <laughs> you know, you may not even know what you're supposed to do. You may not even know that you need to launch a rocket to beat the game or, or that that's what the end goal is or how you get there. Um, but when you go in. If you have watched this video, then I would say go in and just consider, even in a very general uh, general concept of what is the most materials I think I'm going to use and plan for that or even more, okay? There, there's uh, kind of the, the saying around the factorial community uh, in terms of space that you should plan how much space you want to build something and then double that amount of space and to actually build with. Uh, and I would say the same applies here. Maybe not double it necessarily, but if you think about it and you're like, well, I may need two lanes, I guess that's enough. I would just do four, okay? Just, if there's any question in your mind that you may need more than two, do four. I would just always recommend four, okay? Of uh, these two, two of these, two of these, and steel. Now, really quick, I do want to touch on why is there only one lane of steel? Uh, because due to the craft time of steel at... 16 seconds per craft cycle and requiring five iron plate per it is incredibly difficult to actually fill even one yellow belt of steel uh, the amount of smelters required is staggering uh, it's 
it's huge. It's crazy. I mean, you know, to, to fill a yellow belt of iron or copper, uh, you need 24. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You need uh, at least 24 uh, furnaces here. And it is, um, it's five times, right? It needs five times of this. And so you can imagine, you can see, you know, imagine how long this is getting, you know, it's going to stack, it's going to come, it's huge. And the amount of iron plate it's going to require is massive as well. So uh, that's why we only have one lane of steel. If you, you know, there's some pe people who build just these massive bases who will actually fill two lanes of steel. Uh, I basically never end up filling a full lane of steel, uh, even though I easily fill four lanes of iron and copper, because it is just it's hard. You you just need a staggering amount of smelting. So that's why we only have the one lane of steel. And really, there's not a ton that uses steel. Uh, so it's not like it's going to be in massive demand. You know, of course, there are some things, ingredients in the science pack recipes that use a fair bit of steel. Uh, but that's that's about it, really. And some engines and stuff. Okay, so there's that. Now, one last thing I want to cover in terms of the bus without getting this too long is having your highest use resources, your, high, your, your most highly used resources closest to where your consumers are. Uh, and I have, you know, this was from last episode, but I left it here on purpose to show you. Now, personally, when I build a main bus system, for whatever reason, this is, this is, there's, you know, this is not a rule. This is just how I play, how I've always played. Um, is I basically always put my production on just one side of the bus. Uh, I will usually put my smelting on uh, one side or the other. If we're doing a vertical bus like this, I will almost always just put it on the left side. I don't know why. Uh, usually, I, I get, I don't know, I'm left-handed. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Um, but I will usually put my smelting on the left-hand side and have it come down to, you know, about where the bus starts, maybe a little lower, and then build upwards from there with my steel. But, or steel with smelting, but then all other production I put on the opposite side of the bus and, and just only on that side. So let's say my smelting stopped here. I, I just don't build anything else on this side of the bus. I don't know why. I, I just build this way. And I think a fair bit of other people do too, where they just build only on one side for all their production, all their science, all their circuits, all their engines, etc., etc. And that's kind of how we have this laid out here. Okay, so that ties into what I'm saying is your highest demand resources are probably going to be iron copper circuits, right? And that's why I have it laid out like this, is having your highest use resources closest to wherever your production uh, of stuff is or consumers in this case of these resources um, is going to mean that you're having spending less time, less hassle and less materials sending these materials off to where they need to go. Let's say, for example, these were switched and iron was way over here where the sulfur is and copper was over here as well. And I was still building on the right side. I would have every single time I want to run iron and copper, which you need for almost every single thing you produce in the game. Um, I would have to run them under this entire bus every single time I want them, which is pretty much always. Uh, whereas now, uh, you know, especially like with the iron or copper may be here. It's kind of interchangeable in my mind, which one you actually put at the very uh, edge. Um, I can literally just split off and just come right over here. At worst, I'm going to have to just underground under one section like, like I have here. And then circuits, again, I put here. I, they aren't used as much as these two, but they are used quite a lot. So I then usually put them uh, just next to these sets. Uh, now, if you're building on both sides doesn't really matter in my opinion if you put the stuff in the middle it's equidistance each side if you put it on the right you're closer to the right farther from the left if you put it on the left vice versa I don't think it really matters either way you're either going to be equally farther you know equally uh far or close and it doesn't really matter but if you build on one side like I do maybe you build on just the left side of your bus and I would say put these on the left side just whatever side is closest to all of your consumption of those materials right uh, and that's my main last tip and uh, suggestion for main bus. It, it just makes it easier. And then, of course, you know, obviously, it will kind of end up where, um, 
like the order in which you produce things in will somewhat determine where they go on the bus like you know my red circuits are going to be almost always to the right of blue circuits not necessarily because i use red circuits more but simply because i make red circuits um in my production cycle before blue circuits so we'll have science let's just say this entire thing represents all science or most science uh like let's just say it represents like red and green science uh then i would have my red circuits here just this is a very rough example just to show you um i'm going to be making these uh, chronologically before I make blue circuits obviously because blue circuits need red circuits um, and then we put our you know our blue circuits here right uh, so it wouldn't really make sense in my mind to have red circuits be like far away and then blue circuits be close uh, when I'm making red circuits first because uh, then I'm gonna have to like cross back and forth kind of needlessly um, so that does determine it a little bit with these, like, later game materials that you start making. Uh, you know, again, kind of like, you know, with, with plastic and, and stuff. Plastic would actually probably be before circuits uh, because you need plastic for red circuits. Kind of depends. Um, so it will be determined a little bit by that. Um, and then the stuff that you, like, these things you hardly use for, for really anything. You, they are used, a, you know, a, a fair bit of them just because the things that use them need quite a lot, but you don't use them for that many things. Um, so it doesn't really matter that they're like way over here or what exactly what order they're in, because you're really only gonna be crossing over like a couple times, uh, opposed to these, which is pretty much for every single thing you wanna make, you're gonna need iron and copper or at least one of them. And likely circuits as well. And there we go. I believe that covers everything, guys. Um, I think I did actually make a mistake in the amount of furnaces I said you needed for iron and copper. I'm having a complete brain fart. I used to know all these ratios uh, just by memory, and I think I still do, and I'm just having a brain fart. I will put a correction uh, note on, on screen. Uh, I will have had that uh, correcting the number you actually need to fill a belt of iron. I, I don't remember. It's either 24 total or 24 on each side. I don't know. My brain is disconnecting. I'm not thinking straight on that, but you will have seen it pop up anyway. I just wanted to note that. It will have a correction. It will have been a correction on there for the correct amount you need. Uh, steel, of course, still needs five times the amount of iron. Uh, so it's going to be massive. Okay, so that's, again, why we only have the one lane of steel. And that is uh, a main bus concept, spacing, how many lanes you need, room for expansion, what to put on your bus, and how to arrange your highest use resources closer to closest to... Uh, your main production slash consumption facilities. And there you go, guys. I hope that helps some of you and uh, maybe hopefully helped you not get stuck with the main bus and understand the concept better and maybe gave you some ideas of how to lay it out. Uh, or if you've never made one, maybe inspired you to make one. And I believe that'll do it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Again, as with the last video, if you did enjoy found it helpful, uh, please do leave a like so other people can find it as well. If you want more content like this, feel free to subscribe as well so you can get notified when I do put it out. Uh, and any thoughts, feedback, uh, questions, leave down below. I would be happy to answer them and reply to the best of my ability. And I believe that is going to be it, guys. As always, thank you so much. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all. And do take care.